one and all present over here. Today is the third day of our week-long national workshop, and this is the first session. And Rima Rabha, Assistant Professor, Department of Economics, Bahana College. And now I'll be hosting this session. The topic of this session is writing of resource papers for conferences and journals. And the resource person for this session is Professor Kaushik Gupta. And uh, Gupta, sir, is currently a professor at the Department of Economics, University of Calcutta. He is also the former vice chancellor of West Bengal University, State University, Barasat. Gupta, sir, did his post graduation from Calcutta University, PhD from Jadavpur University, Calcutta, and postdoctoral research. Uh, as a World Bank Environmental Economist Postdoctoral Fellow from University of York, UK. He was involved with international projects on resource economics with Simon Fraser University, Canada, and also with the Institute for Global Environmental Strategies, Japan. He acted as the only Indian representative of the Sustainable Development Outlook for Asian and East Asian countries conducted by Institute for Global Environmental Strategies, Japan. Professor Gupta sir worked as a part time honorary independent director of Container Corporation of India Limited under the Ministry of Railways Government of India since May 2011 for three years and also worked as the chairman of Audit and Ethics Committee of Container Corporation of India Limited. Professor Gupta has published a large number of papers in reputed international and national journals and has supervised a large number of students for PhD degree. He has also delivered lectures in various reputed universities and institutes all over the world in different capacities. His main areas of specialization are international economics and environmental and resource economics. Professor Gupta has been declared as meritorious alumnus by St. Javier College, Kolkata in 2008, and got this title for four consecutive terms. Sir, we are very honored to have you amongst us. And before starting the session, I would like to request all the participants to keep their audio and video mode off so that the session cannot be interrupted. All your questions and queries will be, you can put in the chat box and we will have a separate interaction session for that. And for this session, the session code is happy. I repeat, it is happy, H-A-P-P-Y. Now I'd like Gupta sir to start us, I'd like to request Gupta sir to start the session. Sir, over to you. Thank you, thank you. Can you hear me everybody? Yes, sir, we can hear you. Yeah, actually, I have been tested COVID positive yesterday. So suffering from high fever as well. So I don't know for how many minutes I'll be able to speak, but I'll try to make my presentation within one hour. So it's okay, nice sir. to be here. It's nice to be here. And if you have any question, you can ask me after my presentation. So it can be more interactive. So uh, actually, let me share the slides which I want to present. Can you see the slide? Yes, sir. Yes, yes. sir. The topic is writing research papers for conferences and journals. Actually, I checked the good research practices as prescribed by UGC, and which are related, not directly, but rather indirectly related to the National Education Policy 2020. So I'll not go to National Education Policy 2020 and the good research practices guidelines which are given there, but in general, from my, I shall, my own experience, I shall also share my own experience with you. Uh, 
and you can check after that afterwards that these are all consistent with the good research practices and ethics as mentioned in the NDC guidelines which are available and I also have a copy of that which I can send you. So it's a very broad topic and it varies from subject to subject. My subject is economics so I can speak more about uh, social sciences and for science the outlook science subjects the outlook is different but still I can say I shall try at least to give you a common guide, many of you know, many of you are already experienced. I shall try to give you a common outline on the basis of which you can prepare your papers for conferences and journals and can think about it and how to write research papers for that way. Because many of you are, as I know, that has personally informed me, many of you are here are PhD scholars or postgraduate students or even undergraduate students. So it will be a guideline for you. The thing is that. What is research? What is what is a research paper? Actually, when we want to show something new, which has not been shown by some others, this is basically research. We, we, what we, when we want to throw some light on a new thing, and it is based on, on the whole subject, but a relatively narrow phase of the subject. How can you prepare a paper on the basis of your research? So you focus on a microscopic part. A relatively narrower phase of a subject, you check the literature and you see that what additional contributions you can make. And you should fill up the research gap that exists on the basis of your new contribution. Of course, the topic should be related to a burning issue. If it is an obsolete one, nobody will be interested and nobody will read your study. So the topic should be related to a current issue or a burning issue in the context of the subject, in the context of the modern development of the subject, with some signs of originality. The methodology that you use in a research paper should not be an obsolete one. Rather, it should be in line with the modern developments of the subject. And on the basis of your results, you will attract persons, you will attract the readers to get interested in your topic. So the conclusions will be such that on the basis of which you can think about the future, you can think about what the development of the subject, you can think about some of the policy contributions and many other things. It, it varies from subject to subject. So there are two ways, two things why one should write a research paper, publish a research paper, if we consider it from the point of view of publication. One is the ideal one, another is the practical one. Ideally, we say that to share the research findings and discoveries so that people can know there is an upliftment of the overall knowledge of the society. It can help if it is related to science or social science. It will improve common man's life. That is the motto. But practically, practically, if you do your research, carry on your research, you can apply for projects and can get some funding on the basis of which you can further extend your research. Practically speaking, you want to have a good rank in Google Scholar or Research Gap. You need research paper, need to publish research paper for that. For promotion, career advancement scheme. To get promoted, you need to do some research. To get a chance in the university, you need to publish papers. To get a job, I mean, a prestigious job. Sometimes, even the college, those who are teaching in a college, to increase the ranking of the college in NAC, the principal asks you about your publication, or the IQAC coordinator asks you, asks you about your publication, and that is also essential. And in some of the research institutes, jobs are not renewed unless you have good publications. So. To keep one's job. So these are the practical reasons that why one should write and publish a research paper apart from the ideal facts. So regarding conferences, again we can say that you can be a resource person and through your keynote address, you can motivate young researchers. That is one, of course, a practical uh, ideal issue. Apart from the apart from disseminating your results to share your research findings and discoveries. But what about the uh, 
conferences from the point of view of young scholars. The young scholars get feedback to proceed further. You have an unfinished paper, but you want to have some comments. So conference is a platform on the basis of which you can have some comments. So everybody can know what the researcher is working at present. So it will, it will boost your confidence. It helps to get promotion as well. It's a precondition for submission of PhD thesis as per UGC norms. And of course, one can deny that conference is the platform on the basis of which one can have connections with others. And surely, it also helps to increase ranking of a college or educational institutions in NAC. And how many conferences you have participated, whether in India or India. The last point which I have added is which I have termed as conference tourism. Sometimes conference helps to visit a place. I mean, if you get some funding, you go there for a conference. And after the conference, you can visit the places. For example, you can have some funding to go to to go to UK international conference, UGC funding. So of course, conference is the first purpose. Unless there is a conference, you won't get the funding to go there. After attending the conference, you can visit some of the places there. So I have termed it as conference tourism. That is also a purpose. This is also a practical purpose. Even you, you can attend conferences in various parts of India. So say History Congress or Indian Economic Association or whatever it may be, Indian Econometric Society, Science Congress and whatever maybe the time you want. So as a result of this conference, after this conference, after presenting the paper, you can have some tourism there as well. So these are all the practical reasons that why one should present a paper in a conference. But these are secondary reasons. The main reason, mainly from the point of view of the young researchers, it's a need. And also, it boosts confidence on the basis of which, through a conference presentation, people can know what the researcher is working so that everybody can locate you that yes here is the person who is working on this particular topic now i'm not going into the different types of research papers there are different types of research paper and this is not the exhaustive list there can be various other types as well so mainly we find that there are if we call it a science subjects or social science subjects we find that there are experimental papers, there are modeling based papers, there are various analytical papers. Even there are some good literature surveys as well. There are some reports as well, interpretative papers as well. So first determine what kind of research paper is required. Once you know the type of that paper, you select the topic. Just select a topic. It should not be, it's not necessarily true that it should be very difficult, but it should be an interesting topic. It should be a topic on which there is some discussion in recent years so that you can motivate your problem. You can convince others that on the basis of your paper that yes, this is a very important topic. So you need to spend some time which which has some appeal in the society. So you should think about the topic very carefully because once you select the topic, you can't divert because you will have to focus on that. So don't want try to write something which doesn't appeal to you. Of course, it should be of interest to you, but it should have uh, some implications from the point of view of the society and people will take interest in that. Otherwise, you won't be able to sell your research. The things you should take into account to consider before writing your research paper. If anyone asks you, can you describe your study in one or two minutes? You should be confident that yes, I know it's clear to me that what are the things that I want to focus. I can explain the study in one to two, two minutes. That what I want to do, I can explain it one or two minutes. If you can do that, then it's think it's important that it's clear to you. The problem is clear to you. So is the hypothesis straightforward? It should not be a difficult one. It should be in a lucid manner. You will explain. If you can go to the papers published in different American journals, foreign journals, you will find that the writing is not so. You did not write Cambridge and English, Cambridge type of English. Rather, you 
make it very lucid but what you want to say here in your paper should be clearly specified so that everybody can understand that going through the paper tables and figures must be concise and precise if you, if you tables if you if you draw a figure if you draw some graph it should be clear from the graph that what are the things that we want to focus please avoid this is a part of ethics data manipulation falsification plagiarism duplicate manuscript don't do that rather try to take just give some time on it think about the problem try to think about the problem and think that whether you can describe it in one or two minutes you can explain the graphs you can explain your study you can explain your experiments and you can test the hypothesis in a proper way so th these are the things before writing this is this you can anticipate but you cannot guarantee that after preparing the paper that whether you will be able to do that but at least try with this if you are confident enough it's sure that you will be able to succeed so one cannot generalize the research problem it's true that one cannot generalize the research problem now i should show you some hypothetical situation suppose i am the supervisor suppose i am the supervisor it's my own way of interpreting the things how can i distinguish between a good supervisor and a bad supervisor that i'll show for any social science research problem usually i don't know i'm not very sure about science subjects but this is also this should also be true for science subjects it starts with a literature review in order to find out the research gaps and to focus in a concentrated manner on a particular issue that is missing in the literature the suppose we consider a phd scholar when when the particular scholar he or she starts a phd the, the particular person the particular scholar is not aware about research and is not aware about the supervisor so there can be two alternative super situations i shall start from a situation i shall call it a bad supervisor first this is a hypothetical illustration supervisor one Supervisor one asks the scholar to select 40 articles first, go through those 40 articles, then think about a problem, and then meet with the supervisor after three months. Supervisor might be busy, supervisor one might be busy, and might think that he or she can do some other works. At least for three months, the scholar will not disturb him or her. So he can ask, he or she can ask the scholar to go through 40 articles, think about the problem. 40 articles and then meet the supervisor after three months. Imagine a PhD scholar just after passing MA or MSc or in college. And there is no MPhil now at present at called UGC rounds. How much maturity can we expect from a PhD scholar just who has just passed up so that going through 40 articles, he or she will be able to select a problem? He will get puzzled. He or she will get puzzled. So, what will be the outcome? After one month, there will be no progress, no concrete progress. The particular scholar will try to go through 40 articles, will get about 20, 25 articles, but will get totally puzzled from the point of view of research. Because in case of research, as I said, that you need to narrow down. So, what will be the long term outcome? The person will be, the scholar will be a frustrated researcher. Now I shall consider another situation, alternative situation. Supervisor asks the scholar to go through five articles first and to think about some preliminary analytical fit. Think about the research problem on the basis of these five articles, not 40, neither 40 nor uh, 25. Just five articles. Think about some preliminary analytical framework and think about the research problem based on those five articles search the data if it is a social science subject an empirical problem and then meet the supervisor not after three months after one month so what the after what will happen after one month the scholar is guided by the supervisor to reframe the problem and to read five to six more articles to modify the problem so first focus on five articles and just try to Think about the gaps there, build a preliminary analytical framework, and then meet the supervisor. The supervisor will point out that what are the things that are missing 
So you need to read five or six more articles, modify the problem, and meet again after one month. Outcome, good progress from the point of view. Sir, sorry to interrupt you. Uh, just a minute. Uh, Padmavati Shaikya, ma'am, please stop presenting your screen. Uh, okay. I can't hear. Um, uh, no, sir. Now, we can hear you. The participant uh, is presenting her screen, so your screen is not visible. Just a minute, sir. I am asking. Padmavati Shaikya, ma'am, please stop presenting your screen. Just tell me when we will be ready. So, just a moment. Padmavati Sekhya, ma'am, if you can hear us, please stop presenting your screen. Padmavati, by the way, Apuni is the Huni Asse, Apuni, stop Apna screen to present Kurato Bonthokorok. Uporot Sok, stop presenting your screen Likase, Tadapni Press Corridio. Stop presenting it by the Herikorok, stop presenting it by the Korok. Padmavati, by the stop presenting Korok, please. Padmavati Baidu. Is it okay now? Okay, sir. Okay. Okay. Now you can see now my screen. Can you see now my screen? Yes, sir. Yes. So where you from where you missed will you tell me then i'll repeat that point we repeat the screen sharing from that you you could see you could follow supervisor one you could see that yes yes sir. Sir. yes sir so i i just restate the points I, as i said this is a hypothetical situation in case of supervisor two so in case of supervisor two ask the scholar to go through five articles first to think about some preliminary analytical framework, think about the research problem, and then just prepare a basic analytical framework. After one month, the scholar is guided by the supervisor to reframe the problem, to go, go through five or six more articles to modify the problem. And in this case, we find, in case of supervisor two, we find that as it's not 40 articles referred at a stretch, rather five first, some work, and then again six or five, and some progress. So it implies good progress from the point of view of research, and there is increase in the confidence of the researcher. So long term outcome, the researcher will turn out to be a good scholar. That I want to show Can we, in a more concrete way, the case of supervisor two. So what the supervisor two is doing here? Preliminary asking the scholar to do some preliminary literature survey and then an initial analytical framework. And after that, modification of the model through literature survey and much improved specification. I call it a zigzag method of research. It's much better. So it appears that if the scholar can do the work under supervisor too, that will be the better path for proceed for proceeding in research. So this should be the proper way of supervising as well as, as well as doing a work. Now, writing the manuscript. Can you see the screen now? Is it okay to everybody? Yes, yes sir. sir. Okay. Writing the manuscript. Usual, usual sequence of a paper. And you, all of you know that in usual sequence, we write the title of the paper, then the name of the authors with affiliation, abstract, keywords, and Acknowledgements. So in case of good journals, where we have, where these are sent to the reference, usually it's blind referring. So the cover page needs to be submitted in a different way. I mean, in, as a separate file, because it's blind referring, and the referee does not know that who is actually the author of the paper. So in the main body, what are the things that you need to follow? Usually, there is no fixed guideline, but usually we consider introduction, literature review, methods, results and then summary and conclusions with the references. Now, but when you write the manuscript, don't start from the cover page because you can't write the abstract first unless you write the main body. So first of all, you will have to determine your title. It, it may happen that you 
keep to change the title a little bit. So it's not that you, you can fix the title at the beginning. Writing the paper, seeing your contribution, you can fix your title. But it should not be a very long title. See the journal rules. You should think that what type of journals publish this type of research papers. So I can give you some illustration because uh, you know that there is a there is an institute in Bangalore, the uh, Institute of Economic and Social Change, and they publish an articles journals, which is a CH publication, of course, Scopus. They publish a journal uh, known as Journal of Social and Economic Development. I had a talk with the editor of that journal. The particular lady told me that usually we don't consider, even if it is a good article, we don't publish articles which are not related in any way to social issues of the economy. So if it is related to gender, something related to gender, it should be linked with some social issues. If it is related to some uh, employment related issue, it should be linked with social issues. If it is uh, related to some political issue, it should be related to some social change or social issues. So, what is the implication from the point of view of society that needs to be mentioned there in the abstract, in the body, and also it should be reflected in the title. So it depends upon what type of uh, article that the journal wants. Otherwise, there will be disk rejection. You will be not sent to the reference. So you will have to see the journal rules. What type of journal, what type of paper they invite, what type of paper they want. So the title, you fix the title, three things you keep in mind. That first of all, the title should be an attractive one. It should not be too long, but it should be a one so that if the paper gets read, so people can read the article. So paper gets read. So you should fix it in a manner, the title in a manner, in a clever way. Avoid long title, and avoid abbreviations. But my suggestion is that after writing the paper, fix the title. You have a tentative title, but you can change marginally the title. You know that what topic you are talking about. In the introduction, in introduction, provide a brief background. Don't forget to tell the reader, readers that why you have chosen this particular hypothesis and what is uh, what is the particular why this particular topic is important. Why your research area. In other words. You should make it clear why you are motivated to do this particular study. This motivation is very important. Unless it is properly motivated, the referee points out that everything is okay, but the motivation is not clear. The motivation should be stated clearly. Provide a brief background. Stick the hypothesis and the central question. Now, it's not a detective story. That it's not that detective story that you won't mention the outcome at the end. What happens, you will suppress that so that going through the story, you will find at the end the outcomes. It's not like that. After all, it's a research. So you know your findings. I'm not saying that you should mention all your results in the introduction. I'm not saying that. But what I am trying to say is that in one sentence, you mention the summary of the findings, but not in that sense that we we have obtained this and this. It's not like that. We would like to obtain this because you know the summary of the findings. So you cleverly write the summary of the findings in the form of question or what you intend to do. So you should start in a manner after doing the whole paper. So my advice is that to reshuffle your introduction after finishing your paper. So don't try to start from the introduction. It's very difficult to write a good introduction. So rather you you write the paper, you write the main body, and then reshuffle your introduction and pose the problem in a, in a, in a manner such that it's, it appears to be a very important problem from the point of view of the society, from the point of view of the country, from the point of view of the subject as well. So you should try to write, you should rewrite or reshuffle your introduction on the basis of your results. A literature review, this is my own view that what should be a literature review. A bad okay. literature survey is very easy to do. And uh, uh, good, yes? Uh, can I interrupt you for a moment? Uh, one of the participants has said that she is not, uh, they are not able to see the your presentation. But can you, others, can others see? 
I'm not sure if someone says so, uh, we it can take it up. A, uh, the, writing the manuscript slide is visible. Okay. Thank can you. you see it? Writing the manuscript. Yes, yes. I can this see slide the is Slide number 11. Other participants, please unmute. Slide number 11? Yes, yes. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Then it's yes, a sir. problem of that particular person. Yes. Sir. Okay, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Uh, regarding literature review, uh, it's very easy to write a bad literature survey, but it's very difficult to write a good literature survey. A bad literature survey means from Google or from other sources, you can say that here are the authors A, B, C. A has done this, B has done this, C has done this. The literature survey should not be like that. Literature survey, especially for the students who are, I mean, for the scholars, PhD scholars, they should know something about this literature review. That a good literature survey should be like this that you won't get much space for literature survey in a paper. In your thesis, you will get space. But in your paper, you won't get much space. So what you will do, your literature survey should be a thematic. Under each subject, a researcher should consider, say, authors like A, B, C, D. You will try to find out that you should classify your literature survey in this manner. That A, B, C, D, they have focused on this common aspect. Again, authors E, F, G, H, they have focused on this common aspect. Out of these common aspects, more or less say, there is some differences, there is some difference in methodology, there is some difference in the title, of course, there should be difference. There is some difference in the results as well. But you can say that A, F, A B, C, D, they have focused on the common theme, like this, common aspect. But what is missing in A, B, C, D, in all the works, is this. So herein lies the research gap. That I, that I or you want to fill up. Uh, herein lies the research gap, what is missing in the ABCD's work together. Similarly, you can consider the common aspects of EFGH. And you can point out that EFGH, they have all covered these aspects. But what is missing in EFGH, you can give this comment, you can pass these comments. It will help you to identify the research gaps. So what is missing in EFGH work is that none of them have considered a particular issue, which you want to focus. So at the end of the literature review, there should be a focus on research gap and how your research fills up the lacuna that exists in the works, in the literature. And it should be linked with your motivation that you mentioned earlier. So that will throw light at how important your problem is. Don't overemphasize, but you should mention this. Regarding the methods, uh, regarding the methods, whenever you start your experiments, you should begin writing because once you get the results, once you get the results, you should try to think about interpretation of the results, how you try to uh, present, how you can present it. Now, you should explain it clearly. It should be a detailed one, but remember, in case of paper, publishing paper, there is a limitation. So by detail, I mean that you should not write pages after pages. It should be an exhaustive one. But you should use footnotes. Sometimes it may not be necessary to mention in the body, but in the footnotes, you should mention some point that one can see this and this one for further clarification, for further extension. So that's why footnotes are very important. And reference of published works which deals with that particular methodology would make the referee would make it more convincing for the referee to accept it because you should you can use one methodology but you should mention that this type of methodology is quite known in the literature this i have used here because others have not used this type of methodology in the particular aspect of this problem so that's why you are using it but you should mention the references of those published papers Results should be briefly reported and emphasize, you should emphasize on the main results, not everything. And you should emphasize on your innovative findings. As I said, that tables and figures should be concise as well. Do not overemphasize, over discuss the results. Just mention it once, but in a convincing way. The 
when we write the conclusions, first answer the question because these two are linked, but you should not copy paste your conclusion in the introduction. You should not do that. Once your results are established, you know that what is your result. And on the basis of that, you can fix your questions in the introduction. So your results should be linked to your questions in the introduction. And how important your con conclusion is related to the existing knowledge. If it is something different from the conventional wisdom, that is an important point. That is the common knowledge, but you are doing showing something which is different from the common knowledge. So you should relate your conclusion with that of existing knowledge. It's a quite striking thing that if your results are different from the existing knowledge, that is your contribution. And you should mention the weaknesses and discrepancies, but you should not overemphasize the discuss, uh, weaknesses and discrepancies. Because if you overemphasize, then people might ask that why you have focused on this problem. You should write in one or two lines that these are the this might be the weaknesses, but given the nature of the problem, our paper is sufficient enough to capture all these issues. Things which are left out can be a part of our future research agenda. And explain what is new without exaggerating. But you should not overemphasize, but mention what is new. And regarding the weaknesses and discrepancies, it should not be at the beginning, it should be at the end. And of course, you should mention the policy implication. Do not repeat the results. Okay. Regarding the references, people do not know much about the references. Remember that if you mention anything in the body of the paper or even in the footnote, you should mention it in the reference list. It's not that a thing which you have not mentioned in either in the body or in the footnote. It's not necessarily true that you will have to mention it in the reference list. That is the difference between a reference list and the bibliography. In a thesis, in the bibliography, you can mention many things. Reference is a subset of that bibliography. In the journal reference list, mention those references, which are and references in the, in the body of the paper and also in the footnote. Remember, everything should be mentioned in terms of surname. Say, my name, Koshik Gupta, and say Shundipan Roy. It should not be Shundipo Koshik Gupta and Shundipan Roy. It should be Gupta and Roy within brackets, say 2020, as mentioned. So, and in the reference, it should be Gupta S and Roy S 2020, then the name of the journal. So, surnames are important. How to, how to show the references. And use the style of the journal. Different journals have different styles. In some of the journals, the journal names in the reference list are mentioned in italics form. Some in some of the journals, it's not like that. Usually we write the journal names in italics form. So just look about the style of the journal. It depends upon the journal where you will submit your article so that there is high chance of acceptance. These are the tips for a good abstract. You should write the abstract at the end, though it's in the cover page. So abstract should be within 200 words. Of course, it tells you the summary of the research findings. It should focus on the purpose of your research paper in one line. Experiment at the results of the main results of your research. research. And summar which summarizes the work done. What is your conclusion that you should mention? Everything should be within 200 words. Should be a single para abstract in a very, very brief manner. So these are the points that I have mentioned. What are the components of a good abstract? I'm not reading it out. You can see it. So you should point out the major results, major implications of your work main objective of your work and the critical part of your work not everything you should mention in the abstract now when you review your paper you will check this is checklist work is the abstract concise and clear did i follow my outline you should this you should check that is there anything missing in the abstract are the arguments presented in a logical sequence? These are the things you should think. Are all sources properly 
cite it so that there is no plagiarism. There are various checks of plagiarism. So have I proved my work with strong supporting arguments? Please go through this. Check whether this whether there is any grammatical errors. You can easily check it in your auto dictionary check in computer, or you can use a dictionary as needed. Do a spell check with computer. Give it. Give someone else to read it. The second pair of eyes can see the mistakes. How it sounds. How it looks like. I always when I write a paper, I read it. And I give it to somebody else to read it. Even my scholars, I give it to some them. They just read it and see that whether you can follow this, whether it, it, it sounds interesting to you or not. This is checklist one. Checklist two. That whether did I begin each paragraph with a proper topic sentence, that whether in a proper way you have finished it. Any unfinished sentences there, you'll have to check. Different, whether the sentences are of different lengths. It's not that it should not be a very large sentence. Okay. As I said about this grammatical error, this you have already known. Yeah, that if there is any quotation, quotes should be accurate. Source, spelling, punctuation, everything. So this is checklist too. Now, with the reviewer, when we it will go to the reviewer, reviewer will always read your abstract first and after going so that the reviewer will take into interest abstract and conclusion should be different don't copy paste now in case of the submission of the journal that you you should check what is the scope of the journal if it is a journal on say a particular issue and you have your paper paper is on a on some other issue so don't submit in that particular. So just say that, just see the earlier issues of the journal, whether papers similar to you are published in the journal. Now I'm giving you some tips. It's true for the big journals as well. Now try to cite some of the references in your paper from that particular journal. Say, for example, I want to submit a journal of development economics, which is a, which is a renowned journal. Then, I should check various issues of Journal of Development Economics. I should not make irrelevant citation, but I shall try to link my topic with some of the works related to the particular topic published in Journal of Development Economics and try to cite at least three or four recent references, not very old, three or four very recent references that, that, that increases the chance of accepting the paper for referring purpose because otherwise there can be this rejection uh, this is just a tips the use of third person use of passive voice that authors have shown in this way or we have proposed okay minimize the use of first person so we write the paper in a passive voice and though i do not use latex but it's always advisable. The young generation uses latex. I, I, I type it in Microsoft Word, mainly for scientific papers. Use latex to prepare your paper. It minimizes the error. And sometimes, yes, it's true that journals often get rejected. Often your articles get rejected. But don't get disheartened. I face so many rejections. And then I again submit to some other good journal. If you want to publish it in good journal, then you it can be rejected. You don't know because the referee will not know, don't know that whether it's Koshik Guptu is submitting the paper. So it's Koshik Guptu will be treated in the same manner with that of a research model. So you should take it sportingly, but of course you should try to minimize your error. I'll just show you one way that recently a paper got accepted in a special issue but just i'll share some of the slides with you that how to respond to the reviewers in case of acceptance and the editor thanked me that it's a very good revision though there were many comments on part of the research of part of the reviewer so can you see the screen i just want to share my own experience with you recent experience yes sir yes sir there were various comments of the reference i'm not going through all the comments but 
it's mentioned that as you see the question that was related to a issue like customs union that's those who are not familiar with customs union i can say that you can consider european union as an example of customs union so some of the countries unite together and uh, form this customs union type of thing union among themselves so european union asean and many others are examples of customs union and you know about brexit that uh, Great Britain just went away from customs European Union. So I cited something about Brexit. And this is the comment of the referee. The referee has mentioned that in introduction, the authors claim that breaking of customs union in the form of quitting of Great Britain from European Union has motivated us. I mentioned it as a part of motivation. However, I am not convinced about how the author's theoretical model is related to Brexit. Related to this, I would like the author to motivate through real world examples. So as a reply, this is the reply to the report. I'm not going to reading out all the reply, but you can see that something is mentioned in red colors. Can you see this, the red colors? Yes, sir. So what we have said, that we have taken care of this query, and it is shown in page numbers four and five, and also in details in page number 12 and 13, along with footnote 12. All these points that are incorporated in the paper are in red color. So I sent them the word file. So if it is latex, they need the source file. But as I typed in word, I sent them the word file as well. But you can see that just as I mentioned just now, sorry, as I mentioned just now, in page number, in page numbers four and five, and also in 12, page number four and five, and also in page number 12 and 13 in page number four and five and also and also in 12 and 13 this is page number four and five and i mentioned in page four you can see the brexit example four and five and also in page number 12 and 13 12 and 13 12 and 13 so these are the things i changed lots of things i changed on the basis of the comments of the referee as the referee wants so what I did here actually, that this is the response of the referee, response to the referee, to, to his or her query one. And I mentioned the corresponding things, the main things here in red color, and also in the paper in red color, so that the referee can easily locate. So some of the proofs of some of the proposition I explained verbally, just analytically. And the referee wanted another mathematical proofs. Now it's not possible to accommodate everything in a paper. So I have created a different file, which are available on request. I sent it as a separate attachment. These are not meant for publication, but are available on request. And I mentioned it here. And in the paper also, I mentioned it in the form of available on request. So there are various points of the referee. I'm not going through all the points. But the major points I have highlighted in the response to the referee in red color. And in the paper itself, I also incorporated in red color various points of the referee. I also acknowledge the referee. The comments from an anonymous referee is greatly helpful. So I've just pointed out the results here. It's not possible. There is a page limit of any paper in any journal. So it's not possible. So what I did, I just mentioned, so I just so i just mentioned about can you see the powerpoint now yes sir so just see that you it, there is every chance it gets rejected now in science in economics and various other social science subjects usually when we write a paper it's a contribution of three or four authors, so especially in science papers, science, scientific papers. So if you work in the lab, there are so many persons who are involved. And it depends upon your contribution. It depends upon your contribution. So write your name as first author if your contribution is full. Otherwise, it should it should be you should mention the maintain the research ethics. If it is an equal contribution, if it is equal contribution, then the sequence of the authors should be on the basis of surnames. Create your profile on Google, your cite citations, Google My Citations. 
and it will improve your visibility. So these are the indexing bodies. You know all these things. So I'm not going through all, reading out all these things. So for Scopus Journal, Wave of Science, you know all this. And these are, even you can be a member of research get and many other things that put Google Scholar so that you can know that what is your current state. And if you have some other journals, especially for your job, even if it is not, not a Scopus journal or Wave of Science or anything else, then it should be a UGC approved list care journal at present. And these are the publishing houses. The journals are of two types, paid and unpaid. Some of the internationally famous journals are paid journals, it's true. So it's, it's not guaranteed that uh, there are some fake journals also which are paid journals. And there are some well-renowned journals which are paid journals. For example, I can say from the point of view of economics, I can say that economic modeling and these are all LCBR journals. They are paid journals, but always I prefer to go for unpaid journals. Always go for, don't think too much about the impact factor. But some of the fake journals, they show that their impact factor is very high. But these are actually fake journals, not run for them. How old the journal is, the volume number, you should check it before checking, before submitting a any journal, whether it's a well-known journal or not that is important. Of course, number of issues. Whether it's monthly, quarterly, semi-yearly, monthly, bi-monthly, etc. But if it is a monthly, there are doubts because unless it's a well-renowned publisher, it's very difficult to go through the because whenever we refer, we act as a referee for any paper, usually one month or one and a half month is allotted to us for doing the referee. And we send it to the referee, we send it to the contributor, the, the editor, editor sends it to the contributor, the contributor replies. With, and again, there can be a second recording, and it takes about one year to get published. So don't hurry if you want to publish in a good journal. Now, you know, many of you know that what, what is impact factor, but this is a rough calculation. Say for the year 2020, it can be 2020, 2021 as well. So just think about 2020. It's a measure of average number of citations to others. So if it is more than two, then it's think that you can think that it's impact factor is good. At least. But if it is abnormally high, then you will have to check that whether it's actually it's a fake journal or not. Can't be if it is abnormal, unless it's a very famous journal. Now A, suppose A stands for total sites in 2020. And B stands for 2020 sites to articles published in 20, 2018 19 so naturally, B is a subset of A. It's 2020 sites to articles just published in the year 2018-19. And C shows the actual number of articles published in the year 2018-19. And what is an impact factor? It's B divided by C. It's the 2020 impact factor. So B shows 2020 sites published in 2018-19. So in the 2020 journal, how many 2018-19 articles are referred, cited? And C shows the total number of articles published in the year 2018-19. So this is all up from my point that the, the, the floor is now open for questions. Thank you so much, sir, uh, for sparing your time and we had an opportunity to, opportunity to hear you on this particular topic. And this will surely help and, us. Uh, have, I, have, I stopped my screen sharing? have I stopped my screen sharing? Stop sharing. Oh, no, sir. It's, yes, it's okay, sir. So it okay. will surely help us in our future write ups and publications. Uh, sir has extensively discussed about the statement of the problem and how to narrow down our research work. Actually, we as a research scholars, we always face that problem in our PhD or MPhil research, how to narrow down our study. Uh, along with this, sir has also discussed about the role of a supervisor and also 
problems faced by the supervisor and extensively discussed every aspect related to a good research paper, a good write-up, and publication as well. Uh, now we'll move to the interaction session. Participants are requested to put up their questions in the chat box, or you can raise your hand and ask the questions. You can raise your hand. I can, I can just. Actually, my concern is that as I'm suffering from COVID, I have some fever and I can't yes. speak. Yeah, and got to know, sir. Yeah. Are there any questions? If you have any question, you can ask any query. You can raise your hand or you can put it in the chat box. So no question is there. No questions is coming. Okay, I'll send the uh, I'll send my presentation. Okay. Yes. I'll sir. send my presentation. Thank you. Sir. Thank you. Uh, yes, sir. So is there any questions? Just some somebody has written thank you, sir. So it appears to me that somebody, some, many of them could not see the slides properly, but it was visible. Yeah. Uh, was it visible? Yes, we... yes, it was visible, sir. Anyway. So if not, any questions are not coming, so we'll wrap up, wrap up the session. But before that, the participants will repeat the session code. It is happy for this first session. It is happy H A W P Y, and you all are requested to submit your feedback forms and as well as assignments in your Google Classroom. And if somebody is not joined yet, you are requested to send your mail ID so that we can edit in your in our Google Classroom. Okay, I'll send the matter to the workshop email. Okay. Okay, thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. So we'll wrap it up. Thank you, sir. Thank you for sparing thank you, thank you. your time. And take care, sir. Take care of your health. Thank you, sir. Thank Wish you a speedy recovery, sir. Thank you. Thank you. I'm leaving then. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. So good to have you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Participants, the session code is happy. It is happy. So the second session will start at 12.30 at sharp, and all are requested to join the same. Thank you.